great place to work. Yes. And there are still current rock stars in the house. Okay? So, I have the privilege and the opportunity to uh, introduce Dr. Henry Gregory Jr. See, I didn't know that junior part. Um, and actually, um, I didn't say I needed to introduce him, but I did say he's the only speaker I know, and I knew he was at the beginning, and I did say I got to leave a little early. <laughs> so I had the opportunity to do this, and I'm excited about it because he played a major role in my life. He was my N2 class of 07 instructor. <laughs> All right. and, uh, and he didn't present N2 just as a treatment model, but he presented it as a lifestyle, and it's changed my life. So without further ado, we're going to introduce this great man. He is a mental health professional, capital P. He has 40 plus years of experience. He has a doctoral degree in clinical psychology, a master's degree in community mental health, and he's still a community person. He's a consultant, and they list about 20 areas where he consults. So I'm going to say he just consults in everything. <laughs> um, child welfare, criminal justice, substance abuse, <laughs> HIV, AIDS, juvenile justice, school-based mental health, behavioral health. He's done it all. Um, his specialty, uh, his orientation, has always been in family systems. Um, some of the key things, and y'all can imagine he's got a long resume. He's worked though with Baltimore Family Life Center. He developed their Enriched Structural Family Therapy Program. And of course, his leading, leading role, his Progressive Life Center, led the development of Into Psychotherapy. He is currently an assistant professor at University of Maryland School of Nursing. Associate Director of the Center for Community Collaboration. Um, let's see, President of the Baltimore Homa Community. See, I got that right. Uh, Community-based organization dedicated to supporting loving and sustainable ways of living. He um, runs a center, well, actually he runs two centers in Westminster, Maryland, and Randallstown as well. And his role is to consult and train clinicians like many of you in the room today. He has his own organization called the Rafiki Consortium. And I just wanted to end it with a quote that kind of sums up Dr. Gregory. It says, Dr. Gregory passionately believes that we create our own destiny by how we think about ourselves and our circumstance. To this end, he believes that a focus on strengths, which is our model, competence, and resilience will revolutionize the field of mental health. So that's Dr. Gregory. Pleased to introduce you to some, but most of us already know you, so we celebrate you. got PhDs either while we were in progressive life or immediately following that. So I remember being in, in, in a graduate school, when I got the job as clinical director, Fred said, you got to get a PhD. I said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm about, you know, a, a few years in, into it, I'm getting tired of the PhD program. Y'all know how this is. You go <laughs> through, you say, what is this about? They're not teaching me anything new. I did. My grandmother and my, my people took me, taught me all that. They just put the fancy names on it. But I'm in the, I come out of the elevator one day, and I run into uh, Amanifu and, and Robert Hill. And I was having a little conversation with him. He said, look. He said, no, hang in there. He said, he said hang in there. I know you may not learn anything new, but people will take you more seriously if you get it. I said, oh, that's a good reason. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but 
But that little bit of encouragement kept me going and, you know, changed things. Um, so I, I had the, the, the privilege of coming to Progressive Life originally uh, as a trainer from, from uh, our time with a group in Baltimore, Baltimore uh, Family Life Center. And we talked about enriched structural family therapy. For those of you who uh, want to check it out, in the November issue of Urban uh, Social Work, there's an article that we uh, my daughter and I and some of our other family members authored on enriched structural family therapy will be in that month. That's a precursor to into, a precursor to into. So, uh, into. So when, so when I think of into, past, present, and future, what I think about now is our current uh, situations in the world. Um, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but things seem to be falling apart. <laughs> um, and I'm not just talking about locally. I'm talking about <laughs> nationally and internationally. And at some level, it's a good thing because um, a lot of things that have, that have been happening for a while have not, are not taking care of most of the people on the planet. Uh, somebody was telling me, we were talking about the 80s the other day, and somebody was telling me about some of the conversations at the federal government at that time. When, when so much stuff changed in the 80s and they were saying, oh, we're going to deinstitutionalize uh, folks with mental illness. They didn't say the crack flooded in neighborhoods and HIV and the, the prison to, to uh, I mean, the school, the prison pipeline got started full forward. All of that started happening. But part of the conversation at the federal level was we ain't taking care of poor people no more. Nobody else in the world does it, so we don't think we should do it. That's, remember the Reagan era? Y'all heard about how good that was? <laughs> <coughs> so here, here we are 40 years, 40 years later. And but by some, some people say we're at the end of a 400-year cycle, that most of these so-called empires come up and they last about uh, 400 years. Mm -hmm. And some people say it's even 4,000 years. In the Vedas, they talk about it being a 6,000-year cycle. However you look at it, the way we've been living on this planet has got to shift in a major way now. It's got to shift in a major way. It is not sustainable. The analogy I, I use all the time is like a game. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, I had a second one for you. This is exactly what you got you. <laughs> That's fine. My, my blessing. My blessing. Uh, the analogy I like to use is like a game of Monopoly. You know, most of us have played Monopoly. And you know how you, you get toward the end, somebody has boardwalk and park place and like that. And the rest of us are just playing because we don't know how to get out the game. <laughs> We're out there. This thing is unsustainable. Um, the reason we have the current administration we have is not because of the people in the administration. It's because of the way the system works and the consciousness of the people. The school systems aren't functional anymore. They're not teaching people how to think. They're teaching people how to memorize stuff and get jobs and fit into gross national product, but not necessarily how to think, how to take care of yourself. The, the, the incidence of depression and anxiety is going off the charts. Off the charts. Let's say one out of every five people has a currently diagnosable mental illness. But well, that's a whole nother thing, too, because I think we all have some. You know? <laughs> I, I don't trust people that aren't a little bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but the point, the, the point, the point is, all the systems are breaking. The medical system, oh, it's, <laughs> um, what did, I saw a quote the other day, uh, one of the manufacturers of the opiate drugs and said, because I'm not, I'm not a, responsible to the general population. I'm responsible to my shareholders. Okay? <laughs> the interesting thing about the mind, 
the mind, you can, the mind will, will, will delude, delude you into believing anything you want to believe. <laughs> it will rationalize, justify, defend anything that you want to think. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to think. So people are all kind of all over the place at this point. I say all that to say that things are falling apart, but that is, although it may be uncomfortable, because all of us are bought in at some level, but it's a good thing too, because there has to be um, a falling apart before there can be a building up. You know, you have to end one thing before you can begin another. You know, and that's where in, in two comes in. The seeds that were planted, um, you know, through Fred and others, even before that. These seeds have been planted for a long time, you know, um, because there's always been people who say, we can live better than this, that we have to live together, work together, take care of each other. This thing about exploiting each other, uh, no. I can't be okay if you're not okay too. Mm -hmm. So some of us worked on putting some of this into a model. And to me, the whole purpose of the model resonates with the saying, um, raise your frequency. Raise your frequency. I mean, people have been saying it last night and today. We, you know, progressive life, what, it, it, N2 is not an, just about doing techniques or structure. There's a structure. But the structure is really to keep you out of the way so you can be present in your purest form to assist somebody. And you can't do that unless you're doing it with yourself. So you, so you can't just lay a trip on somebody else. You have to be living it to do it right. So, let me back up. So when I say raise your frequency, this is what I'm talking about. Um, N2 is energy. One of Fred's papers was uh, Into Spirit Energy. Hmm? It, it says that everything is ultimately energy. This piece of wood, this body, this air, everything is energy. Now, I have a PhD and a couple of master's degrees, but I really uh, missed a few days in school, okay? So, physics was not my long suit. <laughs> one of the things I, even, the one thing I remember from physics though is, Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It just changes form. It just changes form. And what form it takes depends on us. So energy, all everything is energy, and the only reason this is harder than the air is because these molecules vibrate slower, and these vibrate more quickly. Same thing happens with our attitudes and our emotions. The, the heavy emotions, we start to vibrate uh, slower. The higher ones, we start to vibrate more quickly. And all that is analogous to, 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 to brain waves and, and the whole bit because it's all in sync. So, so all energy has vibration and all vibration creates a frequency. It creates a frequency. So, so N2 is a methodology for raising that frequency. So as this thing changes, as this thing changes, we as a society, as a culture, as a planet, we're in a process of transformation of changing the ball game, of changing how we vibrate changing how we vibrate. So N2, as a lifestyle, <laughs> as a lifestyle, N2 is about making healthy decisions that are good for the larger picture, not just in the moment, not just in the moment. You know, I've worked in, in addictions too for a long time, even before I came to Progressive. And you know what the hallmark of addictions is? 
The hallmark is, uh, is, um, is um, instant gratification. Hmm? Anybody on, on old bits in here? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Let me ask you this question. Anybody, anybody here not have a habit that you struggle with? No? Oh, oh so we all have habits. We, we, we all have habits, and we get into those habits at some level um, through trying to take care of ourselves, trying to get rid of the pain, trying to feel good, you know, but a lot of times without the work. Into gives us a methodology for doing the work, a structure of taking care of ourselves. So, you know, <laughs> the four principles, real quickly. Harmony. We say harmony is about um, the integration, use that word intention, integration of body, mind, and spirit. At some level, it's about integrity. It's about integrity. Am I doing what I say I value? Is my behavior consistent with my goals? Um, let me see, everybody in here is over 21, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I'm just assuming. So, I'm going to presume that everybody here has, uh, at some level, their body has said to, to them, uh, you don't need to eat that no more. <laughs> or you need to eat less of that. Or, or drink more water. Or, or, or it has required something of you in order for you to be okay. Hmm? And if you're like me, you may not have attended to that the first time you heard it, <laughs> but, it but it keeps recycling, it keeps coming up until we attend to it. And it says it doesn't just affect the body, because uh, when my toe is hurting, it's hard for me to concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> body, mind, and spirit. Body, mind, and spirit. Hmm? You know, um, so, so harmony is about integrity, it's about consistency, it's about congruence. It's about congruence. And one of the first parts of it is understanding what are my highest values? What are my highest values? And what does it take for me to be consistent in them? Again, most of us have been to the, to the thing where we have an ideal, we have a value, we have a goal, and then somebody plucks our nerve. <laughs> and then we go to another, we go to our default. <laughs> we go to our default. So harmony, at, at some level, means dealing with our, with our stuff. Because all of us have stuff. We were all blessed with stuff. That's part of, that's part of being on the planet, <laughs> is, is having stuff to work through. It's a purification process. It's a purification process. Mm. And then, the, and then there's, uh, there's balance. Um, balance is, I consider, is um, handling the curves in life, the distractions, uh, the blockages. They, they, they are always there. <clears throat> They're always there. Um, all of us have some, uh, what I call emotional blockages. <clears throat> Um, we talk so much about trauma. Uh, there's different levels of it, but all of us have had serious stuff imprint our spirits from things that happened early in life. Whether they were big things like molestation, uh, 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 being physically injured, or, or, or little things like somebody took, took my bike or called me out my name, whatever. We got, we got that stuff there, and it stays around, and it hangs us up, and we tap into it, unless and until we start to do some stuff to clean house. So balance, to me, for most of us, boils down to self-care. Self-care. 
And we all have to continually get better at self-care. And again, Crystal and I had half of this conversation just sit, sitting there. I was talking about uh, a little bit about women at a certain age, uh, yeah, 40-ish, um, um, really have to shift gears. Because hmm? women are so socialized to take care of everybody else. That if you don't start taking care of yourself at another level, it becomes problematic. <laughs> you heard that? Okay, okay. Um, the brothers, we got our stuff too. <laughs> One of the ways our stuff manifests is we're socialized not to have stuff. <clears throat> I'm cool. Cool means I'm not a tender in the field. <laughs> and if I take it back another step, okay. I'm cold. That means I don't have any feelings and I might do anything. Mm. So part of brothers learning to take care of ourselves is learning to be emotionally confident. Mm -hmm. Attending to our feelings. <laughs> because if you, what happens when we don't attend to our feelings? we begin to act them out. And we generally act them out with reckless behavior. Reckless behavior. <laughs> Excuse my language, but it doesn't matter your ideology. Uh, <laughs> well, what, uh, what I'm saying is, um, we all have work to do. So, you can be the biggest Afrocentrist the hardest Christian, <laughs> the Muslim who prays the most. But all the ideologies and all religions run the gamut from fundamentalist to progressive. Fundamentalist uh, says, as long as I do these certain things, and somebody else is always the problem. Mm -hmm. Progressive says, hey, I got stuff. I need to keep cleaning my house. And whatever ideology or, or, or religion I have is a tool for me to clean my stuff so I can raise my vibration and be healthy and be of service in a genuine way. <laughs> so it's, a, it's an ongoing process of self-reflection, of self-evaluation. Um, um, and be willing to adapt. Because to, to me, that's the definition of intelligence. Intelligence is the ability to adapt to an ever-changing environment. And mental health is about flexibility, being able to adapt and adjust. Because you all, we all get curves, we all get knocked down. The rumor is we all gonna leave the planet at some point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But the issue is, am I flexible enough that I can change gears and be appropriate to the situation, or do I bring my same thing to every party? Mm. And for, cl for cl clinicians, <laughs> if I'm bringing my same uh, program to every client I see, I'm only going to be relevant to certain clients. Mm. I'm going to miss a lot. Because I have, I have my agenda, and I'm not really open enough that I can be of service to the person. So that self-care becomes primary for each one of us. How do I nurture myself, body, mind, and spirit, so I can stay in shape to serve, get the best that I can out of myself? It's an ongoing process. What worked for you 10 years ago may not work for you now. What worked for you yesterday may not be relevant for you today. And nobody can tell you what's most relevant for you. Then there's interconnectedness. Interconnectedness is just uh, the, the realization that we all are one. We all are one. Sometimes I think, you know, um, 
You, you know what else the physicists say? They say time and space are not real. You know? I mean, can you imagine time and space are not, they're just a, there's a big is. You know? <laughs> and we segment it, you know, for our convenience and start living in little parts of it. But interconnectedness says, boom, there's this whole thing that I am a part of. And this thing to see it you as different from me and them as different. Uh, no, not so much. No. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's like looking at the larger picture and realizing we're all cells from the same body. Uh, Sometimes I think, you know, uh, visitors coming down and looking at us coming from, from other places in the universe. And, you know, we, you know, our ego shouldn't be that big that we think we're the only thing that's happening. But uh, the visitor coming down and looked at us and said, oh, look at them. Like we look at the ants. <laughs> so oh, the red ones don't get around with the brown ones, and the brown ones don't get around with the black ones, and the blue ones, you know, but they are ants. <laughs> So, so, so again, when we see ourselves as all connected, it, it, it gets a little harder to look out there, and I have to start looking in here. And if somebody is acting out, whether they call them white supremacists or whatever, whatever, whatever I said, um, at some level, we have some cop uh, culpability. We, we have some response. They are children. If the children are out of, <laughs> if the children are, 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 are out of uh, control in the house, the parents have some responsibility. Some responsibility. And but we do better even with them when we raise our frequency. The issue is you don't want to follow when we're dealing with people who are challenged. We don't want to follow them with our anger. And into doing the same thing, you know, we, we don't want to follow them with our sense of hopelessness and helplessness, and and, and and do things that take us out of our true selves. We we want to remember that we are of divine origin, and we are all commissioned. We all have purpose. We're part of being happy, part of being whole, part of being complete. Part of being successful is being consistent with what our purpose is. And the purpose, you just gotta get still to figure out what the purpose is and really assess some of the things that's happened to you, especially what your strengths, talents, and capabilities are. So, so why did the creator make me this way? Why did, why did he give me this quirk? You know? <laughs> because it's part of your toolbox. You need that to get your work done. So that interconnectedness, it's not about them, it's about us. It's about we are all us. Remember, if you take away this thing of time and space, what's been going on for the last 2,000 years is just a drop in the bucket. For an eternal being that's not related to us, a space, it's just a moment. When you start to look at the, of the whole picture, you say, oh, okay. The universe always moves to correct itself. The issue is whether I'm going to be part of that or I'm going to be dragging my feet trying to get you know, some immediate pleasure out of something that's already died. So, so the last of, the, of the, those is um, authenticity. Um, I used to love it when young people used to say, oh, keeping it real. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I thought that was a good mantra. O only thing is, it's easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it takes some reflection, it takes some checking me to see if I'm really doing what I'm saying or am I deluding myself. Because mm -hmm. it's easy to do. We, we all do it at, at some time or another. Am I, am, am, am I cl clear about who I really am? I know they call me doctor. Some call me Hank. 
police call me number, number 35 too. Um, we all have a lot of different names, but who am I really? Who am I really? When the lights go out, three o'clock in the morning, and I'll, you know, I don't have any distractions, who am I really? What's my purpose and what is real? What is real? Am, 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 am I saying what I mean and am I meaning what I say? You know what the research says now? The research says that the most effective clinicians is not, it is, are not about techniques. It's about your presence. It's about your presence, the energy that you bring to the party. Again, you may have your techniques, and certainly a framework like into it is helpful, but it's about the energy that you bring to the party. It's more about process than content. Not get caught up in the story of what happens. It's about how you respond to what's happening. You know what the, neuro, the neuroscientists are saying. <laughs> Many of us now get caught up in reacting to stuff. And if you look at, if you, if you watch television news, it'll keep you reacting all the time. We've got a new crisis for you. Mm -hmm. You know, every, every two days, it's a new crisis. Mm -hmm. that's, that's back in the, the amygdala, the amygdala, the, the, the reptilian brain, fight, flight, freeze. Mm -hmm. And that's what gets played on so many of us so much of the time. Behaviors thing, if I give you the right stimulus, I'm gonna get a response. That's what all these commercials are built on. And each one of us sees about 2,000 commercials a day. Hmm? On your phone, driving from here to Baltimore, you see all these commercials, and they're trying to influence you, and, and most of them are aimed at the lowest common denominator, which is fight, flight, or freedom. And as a consequence, as a consequence, more and more of our population are not capable, are not capable of empathy. So talk about emotional confidence, it starts with understanding my feelings and then understanding other people's. When I do that, I can communicate with them. More and more people, the, the more and more people around who are not hooked up with the prefrontal cortex where reasoning and empathy live. So, I mean, we can spend time hating on them, but it, what I'm saying is, some, a lot of people have lost the capability to, to really see other people's issues, to feel other people's pain. So it's hard for them to do we when they can't feel anybody else's pain. And that's detrimental to us all. Because empathy is a major way that we connect so we can work together. And to me, the main issue on this planet right now is we have to get better at working together. We have to get working. And as this, as some of our vibrations go up, I mean, there's other ones who are not quite ready. And you know what happens in school, right? Some people, some people pass in the next grade, and some have to do some remedial work. That's that's, that's not, that's beyond my pain grade, right? <laughs> the point is, we all have to keep working on us. And the more we work on us, the more we create healing energies, healing vibrations in our families, in our communities, in our work, the more we spread into. Comments, questions, thoughts, Bill? Thank you. I appreciate you. Continue to work.